Hello, this is Tim Stewart from Visual Decisions. We're here today to talk about how to use smart factory solutions to improve manual manufacturing operations. We're all faced with embracing a new reality in manufacturing. This reality is based on uh, faster pace, more turnover in the workforce than ever before. It demands new approaches to manual operations and new solutions to support those practices. Meeting these challenges is significantly easier with digital technology, such as solutions to empower frontline workers with the information they need to do their jobs, even in the face of a retiring workforce, uh, increasing product complexity and the immediacy of customer demands. A great example is the augmented reality capability shown here in the picture. Both new and experienced workers can benefit from the highly visual work instructions to perform their tasks. And this is just one of the new technologies that we'll cover today. What is the current state for most companies? Companies can no longer rely on traditional hard copy or video work instructions and basic training methods and expect a highly efficient workforce nor can they rely on the memory and skill uh, retention of their operators and technicians to handle the increasing complexity and variation of products and production lines. The more traditional methods of empowering frontline workers to be productive and do their jobs well cannot keep pace with the demands of today's manufacturing environments. Some examples. The retiring workforce, or simply those walking out the door, are taking their expertise with them. Companies are struggling to capture their expertise before they walk out the door. Use of paper-based systems takes a long time to create and even more time to keep up to date on the shop floor. The process is continuously updated, new products are introduced and other changes take place. Outside of work instructions, there's a lack of current documentation for compliance and safety as well. And all of this leads to inefficient and costly training for new or cross-trained workers. Some, company I've worked, some companies I've worked with have a hard time keeping newly hired employees through the training process due to the clunkiness of the experience. In addition to issues around work instructions and training, there's a lack of visibility into causes for quality and production issues in manual operations. Companies have been able to implement machine monitoring systems for years that automatically track faults when machines go down or produce bad parts, but this capability has not existed for manual operations until recently. So now let's take a look at several of the fart <laughs> uh, smart factory solutions that can help address these challenges. As always, if you're interested in these technologies or anything that I'm talking about today, please reach out to me at tim at visualdecisions.com. First, let me talk about one of the coolest technologies that I've seen in years. My partner Drishti works in the video analytics space. Uh, from our research at Visual Decisions, they're at the forefront of this set of products and provide unique capabilities in the space. They do for manual operations what machine monitoring has done for equipment optimization. They work with the customer to install cameras above each work area and then apply artificial intelligence, machine learning to that video to create data about each operation and each step within those operations. To me, watching this software do its thing is like magic. It can generate incredible insights about the causes of variation within each step and each operation uh, for both quality and cycle time. It can determine whether standard work was followed or if a deviation occurred. And for every deviation, for every long cycle, there's a video of exactly what happened. If you want a technology that will improve root cause analysis for manual operations, this is it. So let's walk through a few examples of what video analytics can provide. Uh, let's start with traceability. To get started with the software, you train it on what a good cycle should look like. This simply involves having your most trusted person perform the task below the camera multiple times. 
once it is trained, the software can then detect when people are not following the standard work instructions when they perform the task. This is called automatic, automatic anomaly detection and provides a video record of each cycle, good and bad. The video for each cycle flagged as an anomaly will be instantly available through many paths in the software interface. Using video search in the software, you can do root cause analysis as simply as using YouTube video searching. Uh, you can be alerted that there was an error and seeing the video for that alert is as simple as clicking a button. You can go quickly down the path to determine the root cause analysis. There's no guessing. You can see exactly what happened in seconds. And you'll also be capturing video on good parts. So if a customer challenges you with a quality inquiry, you can look up a product by serial number and share the video of all the operations with your customer to show evidence that you perform good work. Reducing defects, uh, the system can show when an operator does not complete his work in adherence to uh, the standard work. And this data can provide, uh, excuse me, this data can drive how you provide ongoing reinforcement for standard work and for the training that you provide to your people. And you can define what an error or a warning or a good cycle is for your operators. And you can have your people, uh, your engineers, uh, see the video and see exactly what happened, what went wrong, what steps did the operator uh, take, and where did he not follow that ex the expected standard work steps. And then you can use this data to collaborate and identify actions to, uh, to take to improve, whether this is working with the operator to reinforce the training or perhaps modifying the standard work to make it easier to perform. And the ergonomics analysis that can be performed with the video analytics can also drive significant reductions in both the median time and the cycle variation. For example, I worked with a customer that saw the location of the tooling was uh, causing wasted motion and significant process variation. So they invested in belt holders and saw immediate benefits across all their shifts. Uh, this is one way to pitch the solution to reduce the kind of big brother fear that these solutions can inspire in the workforce. It may not be that the operator is lazy. It may just be that the standards actually need further optimization. And then the system can also be used to increase line efficiency, accelerate training, and mitigate uh, the recall risk. <clears throat> Excuse me. Another partner of mine, uh, Tulip, provides what they call an operation, a frontline operations platform or a composable MES solution. And to me, the platform is an incredibly flexible solution for collecting information from the shop floor, whatever you call it. And then sharing information such as work instructions or visual controls with those frontline workers and coordinating the overall flow of information on the shop floor. It provides these capabilities with a drag and drop development interface, along with a library of pre-built components that can get you up and running very quickly. Once it's operational, you'll find that there's practically no end to the use cases you can perform with it. So let's take a look at a few examples. So this is by no means a comprehensive list. It's just some examples of what you can do. Uh, within quality, you can deploy something as simple as user-friendly data entry forms for inspection and audit execution. But you can also implement something like automated SPC charting, and you can also directly improve quality performance by implementing error-proofing techniques such as pick to light systems. There are also use cases across production in areas such as receiving, packaging, and more. One of the use cases not shown here is around autonomous maintenance and providing the operator with a list of tasks to be performed that day, along with work instructions on how to perform them. Not only can the system provide support for the training process itself, but you can also use it to manage who is trained on what process, what certifications exist, who has them, and ensure that people scheduled on the various tasks that day all have the training that's, that is required. Uh, the system also provides critical support for tracking and monitoring within the facility. And this can be automated monitoring directly from machines or providing an easy interface for manual tracking.
Augmented reality is an interactive experience of a real world environment where the objects that reside in the real world are enhanced by computer generated perceptual information. This is another technology with a lot of important use cases on the shop floor. Uh, AR solutions can deliver in situ assembly and operator work instructions. This can feel a bit like working in the future. But there are applications where having hands-free and in-context instructions greatly in increases operator performance. The solution can also capture the knowledge of experts, enable more effective training, and provide easier access to remote subject matter experts. The use of AR for manufacturing in providing assemblers and operators uh, with easily consumable step-by-step -step work instructions maintenance procedures and real-time on-the-job support to increase safety, efficiency, and customer responsiveness. And it also <clears throat> enables manufacturing organizations to develop uh, detailed 3D work instructions uh, for performing complex assemblies and then delivering those instructions in that easily consumable way. So now that we've seen what each of these technologies can provide, Let's take a step back and look at some use cases from the point of view of operations instead of looking at it from the technology point of view. Some of the use cases that we'll walk through in more detail are training, standard work support, autonomous maintenance, visual controls, quality, setups, and safety. So as I mentioned earlier, I have a customer who who's having issues with turnover on the shop floor. Not only have they had a lot of employees leave since the arrival of the pandemic, but they're having issues retaining new employees with some even walking out during the middle of the training process. Clearly the current onboarding process is not capturing the hearts and minds of new employees. So we talked about many things to improve the process, but here are four key items that we landed on. Let's face it, many training processes were designed with previous generations in mind. Younger workers uh, will have more fun and be more engaged when doing the training with cool technology like uh, the AR goggles and feedback from the video analytics. Uh, this increased attention will help them retain that information when they get out to the shop floor to perform the actual work. And having the video analytics in place on the shop floor will help provide feedback when they deviate from the standard work to continue reinforcing the correct way to do things. <laughs> this is a busy slide, but there's a lot to talk about when discussing the connected work cell. The fundamental idea here is to make it easy to share information with the frontline worker and to collect information from the process. And then that collected data is visible to anyone in the organization that has authorization to see it. It can also be used for visual controls on the shop floor to help guide and influence the behavior of the shop floor personnel. There's a cr critical interaction between smart factory and standard work. And we've discussed some of the obvious touch points already and covered the delivery of standard work instructions to the operator and visual controls a minute ago. But the final bullet in this list is also critical. The capability to detect and elevate attention to deviations from those standards is key to reducing variation on the shop floor. If you think of a standard fishbone or Ishikawa diagram, a couple of the standard branches are for man and method. And these categories, along with materials, are probably at the root of the majority of variation in your manual processes from a quality or cycle time perspective. Being able to automatically detect those deviations to the standards will help drive down that process variability and significantly improve results. I mentioned autonomous maintenance earlier, but it's worth drilling down a bit deeper here. One of the pillars of TPM, or total productive maintenance, 
is to have the operator take as much ownership of maintaining the machine as possible. It's sort of like doing your own basic maintenance on the car. It will be more efficient and probably done with more care and attention since you own the car. But a lot of people don't change their own oil or some don't even change their own wiper fluid. Other than being too busy, the biggest hurdles are some combination of not knowing how, not having the equipment, or not having the consumable, you know, oil, fluids, etc. It's the same thing for operators and their machines. They're measured on production, so they don't have a lot of time. The equipment and consumables aren't necessarily there at the machine. They don't necessarily have the instructions of what should be done and when, and they're unsure when they need to perform those tasks. Uh, with smart factory solutions being discussed today, many of these issues can be addressed. The system will know how many pieces have been made since the previous activity, so the operator doesn't have to track that. The system can provide a list of uh, at any time of what activities have to be performed and step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it. And so for purely manual operations, you know, this may not apply, but for some of those uh, operations that are manual but require uh, equipment at that process, uh, it, this type of thing can be very helpful for driving that ownership down to the operator. A very common way of looking at manufacturing performance is with KPIs or key performance indicators. These are often organized into categories of safety, quality, delivery, cost, inventory, manpower, and environmental. As I mentioned earlier, for a lot of companies, these are tracked in a very manual fashion and displayed on boards with people either you know, coloring in sheets themselves or printing them off from Excel on a daily and weekly basis and posting them up. And these are great because they're color coded and you can immediately see if the status is green or red for any metric. And that's great. It's very visual. It's very easy to see where the problems are. But again, this can be done in a much more automated fashion with a lot less waste in the process. In the inside photo, I would argue that we're seeing a living example there of the eighth waste of underutilization of human potential. I'm sure that that person could be doing something more valuable at this time than putting printed sheets into a magnetic holder every single day. That waste is one of the problems with manual controls. Uh, for people to walk to the boards to enter information or read information requires wasted movement. Writing the information on a whiteboard and then later capturing that information in Excel requires rework. And as mentioned, it's a waste of time when this could all be done automatically. Another issue that's extremely common is errors. Missing data can be a huge issue, as can transcription errors when somebody's transferring the information from the boards into Excel. And as an example here, I had a customer that was using a pasteboard uh, to track production and downtime. Then they captured that downtime from the pasteboard into an access database at the end of every shift. As a pilot, we implemented a smart factory system in some areas of the plant to capture downtime events. And we found that that line was stopping a lot more often. In fact, the manual system was only capturing less than 10% of the downtime events on that line. And that highlights another problem, keeping up with fast-paced environments. When it comes to capturing minor stops, things that only take a few seconds or 30 seconds or whatever it might be, uh, high paced production counts or you know any other rapidly changing information, manual methods just can't keep up. And that's how you end up with less than 10% of the events being captured. Then there are additional limitations. You know, information captured on a whiteboard is only viewable from right in front of the whiteboard. Uh, sharing information with other groups such as engineering, maintenance, purchasing, quality, or others is impossible unless they're also standing right there or if you're double entering the data into some other system. In order to save or persist the data, it has to be entered into that system anyway. And I've worked with customers that had major product recalls that had big gaps in their available information about what happened on the shop floor when those parts were produced because the information went out to a whiteboard that got erased at the end of that shift. And finally, there's only so much detail that fits on a whiteboard. A system can capture so much more context of what was happening at a machine or a manual process that just isn't available otherwise. 
<clears throat> I've talked a lot about quality already, so I won't get into too many details here. Uh, what I want to emphasize is that the improvements we've discussed so far will help all aspects of the total cost of quality. Uh, internally, the cost of poor quality will be reduced through things like variability reduction and detection, uh, error proofing techniques such as pick to light, and improving the existing quality processes and practices with massively improved data. These improvements will help reduce the cost of good quality also uh, through the reduced need for testing and inspection and the ability to replace or augment visual inspection with machine learning based vision systems. All of this helps to reduce the external cost of quality as well. The number of quality escapes should be proportionately reduced as the quality within the plant is improved. Having video evidence of exactly what happened in production is also a game changer for recalls, returns, quality investigations in, initiated by customers, warranty analysis, and much more. Something I haven't touched on too much during this webinar uh, that can utilize the capability of all of these systems is setup reduction. I did a full what webinar and white paper on this topic somewhat recently and so I won't get into too many of the details here but these systems provide great benefits both during the SMED process itself and also to maintain adherence to the new process once the SMED is complete. As you can see here AR solutions can be used to easily capture the current standard process for analysis and document the steps Video analytics can be used to compare the timing of the steps 24 by 7, not just when the expert is wearing the glasses. And this helps capture all the uh, different ways the process is being done today. And the operations platform can gather contextual information uh, from the process itself to help further the analysis. Once the project is complete, it's critical for people to adhere to the new pro uh, process to get the benefits from that uh, project. Once again, you know, each of these systems is providing benefits to help drive that adherence to the new standard work. And finally, there are a number of areas where these solutions can impact worker safety. The one that I'll highlight here is the ergonomics analysis. The video capabilities are invaluable to performing this analysis. Having the system in place will provide information for the team to analyze how the standard work and the workstation configuration impact each unique worker that have different heights, range of motion, levels of strength, et cetera. And easy access to the outliers from a quality and cycle time perspective can show both what can go wrong in the process and also how some workers may be able to consistently perform faster than the existing standard. And that can uh, lead to new best practices and new standard work for everybody. That's it for today. Uh, as always, please reach out to me if you have any questions or if you're interested in learning more. Each of the solutions highlighted today is a key partner for visual decisions, and we've worked very hard to find solutions in each of these different areas that provide rich capabilities, but that are also good partners for our customers to work with over the long term. In the coming weeks, we'll be covering a number of great topics on our webinar Wednesdays. Be sure to go to the Visual Decisions website to register for them today. We provide a number of services to our customers. Won't get into those details, uh, but thank you very much for attending today. And again, uh, please reach out to me with any questions that you have. Thank you very much. Bye.